Welcome to the companion video for moments. In this video, I'm just going to run through a couple of examples on solving moments. The first one will be um, using an example in two dimensions, and then I'll do a, solve a problem in three dimensions. So let's get started with the first example. So here I have a rod of some sort attached to the wall at point O, and there are four forces acting on this rod. And I would like to know what is the total moment of the four forces about point O. So to solve this, I'm basically going to find the sum of the moments about point O equal to the sum of each of the forces times the distance. So I'm going to break this problem into each of the four forces, and we'll look at each of the four forces separately and see how they are causing a moment about point O. So I'm going to start with the 50 Newton force acting in the middle of the 4 meter straight section of the beam that's connected directly to the wall. And so to find the moment that this 50 Newton force causes about point O, which is again, where it connects to the wall. I'm going to take the force, 50 newtons, multiply it by the perpendicular distance. So since this is straight vertical, the perpendicular distance is here, it's 2 meters. So that is the magnitude of that force, but now I need to figure out the direction. So again, we call counterclockwise a positive moment. And if I look at this 50 newton force, I can imagine that it's pushing the beam down in a clockwise direction. So that means that this moment has, should needs a negative sign in front of it to assign its direction. So the total moment is then 100 Newton meters. Okay, so now let's take a look at this 60 Newton force coming straight out from the bar. So if I follow the equation, I'm going to have that this, the moment about point O, where I'm indicating to you again that counterclockwise is positive, is going to be equal to 60 newtons, right? That's the force. Now I need to think about the perpendicular distance between the line of action of that force. So the line of action of this force here and point O. And it should become clear to you pretty quickly that there is no perpendicular distance between the force, the line of action of the force, and that point. So the 60 Newton force does not create a moment about point O. Okay, so next I'm going to take a look at the vertical force at the end of the bar, the 40 Newton force, and I'm again calculate the sum of the moment from that force. So I'm going to indicate again the positive direction is counterclockwise, and MO is going to be equal to that 40 newtons. And now I need a perpendicular distance between point O, where it's connected to the wall, and that line of action of that force. So remember that I can think of this, the line of action of this force. Here's the force, but it's line of action. I can slide it anywhere along this line. So when I'm looking for a perpendicular distance, it's the distance from that dotted line I just drew to point O. So it's going to be equal to 4 meters, the first 2 meters plus 2 meters, plus the horizontal component of the uh, curved part. So this 3 times the cosine of 30. So it's going to be 4 plus 3 cosine 30. And again, let's think about the direction. This force is going to cause it to rotate in a clockwise direction, so it needs a negative. So it's negative 263.9 newton meters. Okay, so our last force is the 20 newton force in the horizontal direction. So even though this force is parallel to that 60 newton force, which we said caused no moment, we're going to look again and see that it does, in fact, cause a moment. So again, I'm going to indicate that the positive direction is counterclockwise, and I'm going to calculate the magnitude of the moment to be 20 newtons, and this time I'm going to look for the 
um, perpendicular component, which I have drawn here as the blue dotted line. So between the line of action of the force and the location that we're trying to rotate about. So that is 3 times the sine of 30 is the moment arm. This one causes rotation in the counterclockwise direction, so it's positive, and it is equal to 30 newton meters. So I found the moment of each component, and to find the total moment, I can just sum those up. So it's going to be a hun negative 100 newton meters plus 0 newton meters minus 263.9 newton meters plus 30 newton meters, which is equal to negative 33.4 newton meters. So that's the total moment about point O caused by these four forces shown. So now we're, I'm going to work through a moment in uh, finding the moment of one force in three dimensions. So here I have the picture showing what we're doing. So it's a flagpole with two forces. So the origin is down here and the flagpole is here and at the top of the flagpole I have two forces, force B coming out in the positive x direction and force Y coming out, sorry, force C coming out over here. So in this example we're going to determine the moment produced by FC about point O. So I'm only looking at this force. So I'm going to start here by drawing my, a free body diagram. And I know free body diagrams are a little harder to draw in three dimensions, but it's still a really good idea and a requirement for this class to attempt to draw a free body diagram. So here I have my origin, and I've drawn a blue line to represent the flagpole. And coming off of it, I have 420 newtons of force starting at point A and going towards point C. And I'm going to try to sketch here just the distances. So it, point C is 6 meters above the origin. And it's 2 meters out in the x direction and 3 meters in the negative y direction. Change that to a dotted line. There we go. And then here are my axes, just so we know. So that's x, z is up, and then negative y. So there's my free body diagram. So we're going to be using vector notation to solve this problem. So the moment about point O as a vector is equal to R cross F, right? So in this case, we're going to look at RA, so the moment arm from O, because we're going about point O, to A, so somewhere on the line of action of the force, crossed with FC. Okay, so I'm going to draw in purple here on the free body diagram what is RA. So here it is. So it's the moment arm from O up to point A, the start of where FC comes off. And so RA is equal to 6K, right? So it only has a Z component. And to get from O up to point A, I just need to go up 6 in the Z direction. So there's the first entry into our cross product. Now I need... FC in Cartesian units. So right now what I have for FC is its magnitude and I have um, or can easily find a position vector that goes along the same line of action from A down to C. So I can say that FC is equal to lambda A dash C which is the unit vector from A to C multiplied by the magnitude of that force, which is 420 newtons. To find lambda AC, the unit vector, I'm going to take the position vector from A to C and divide it by the magnitude of that position vector, and then I'll have the unit vector. So in the x direction, I need to go from, um, to get from A to C, I need to travel 2, positive 2 in the x direction. I need to go back 3 in the y direction and then down 6 in the z direction. Divide that by the square root of 2 squared plus negative 3 squared plus 6 squared. And I'll get that the unit vector going from A to C is 2 sevenths i minus 3 sevenths j minus 6 sevenths k. 
So now the force elect acting along that same line, which we call F sub C, is 420 newtons times that unit vector 2 sevenths I minus 3 sevenths J minus 6 sevenths K, which is equal to 120 I minus 180 J minus 360 K newtons. Okay, so now I have both the position vector and the force in Cartesian units. And so I can find MO using the cross product. So it's going to be RA cross FC. So I'm going to write that as equal to a matrix with IJK on the top, 0, 0, 006 in the position vector location, and 120, negative 180, negative 360 in the force location. When I do the cross product, you're going to end up with 180I plus 720J newton meters. Okay, so that is how you solve a problem, a moment problem in three dimensions. And that's the end of this video, and I hope you found it helpful. Thanks. Bye.